أنا عندي رأي أو إحساس الحقيقة بأنه الكاميرا ليست جهاز أو آلة أنا بحسها وعلاقتي فيها مثل العلاقة مع الإنسان بتحب الكاميرا بتحب أو ما بتحب ولما بتحب بتعرف كيف تعبر الكاميرا عن حبها للشخصية اللي عم تصورها بدون أي تنظير السينما المؤلف بالنسبة لي أن تحقق فيلم ينطلق من الإحساس الداخلي للأشياء التي يخزنها البصر والتي تريد أن تعبر عنها من جديد So, <laughs> welcome again, Nazar and Dari, uh, to Bridges International Film Festival. We are honored that we have your film, Unlocking Stores of Cinema. Uh, very nice uh, film, documentary. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Well done. Exploring uh, the 50 years of artistic contribution of uh, the daring, as you say, Syrian notar Muhammad Malas. Malas uh, is an exile, uh, was exiled from his hometown town uh, of Cunetra, provokes audiences to contemplate lost memory and home. And from the 1967 war and Palestinian camps in Beirut to the songs of Aleppo and the political tragedies of Syria, Malas exemplifies what it means to be a notar and public intellectual. Unlocking Doors of Cinema takes you on a unique cinematic journey where creative cinematography becomes a visual conversation with the auteur's own five day decades of work. So uh, welcome again. What an inspiration with this uh, great uh, artist to make this uh, beautiful uh, uh, documentary. So what uh, was your journey until these five decades of work, <laughs> uh, until you decided to, to make uh, this work? Tell us. It, it's a that. great question. Uh, the journey perhaps begins uh, in that some of the first classes I took in cinema as a young uh, 23 year old was with the director. Uh, where he taught a class at the former Soviet Cultural Institute in Damascus. Um, I was, uh, you know, an Arab American and uh, studying Arabic and theater and writing actually poetry at the time, not cinema, but always fascinated by cinema since uh, since a, a young age. And so he actually taught me uh, the language of cinema in Arabic. Um, and then uh, lots of things happened in my life. I became an academic. I made a couple of short films. I worked as a film curator. I worked uh, in many things. I became a PhD. And I wrote one book about him uh, with uh, another author, Samir Qasim. And uh, in the process of making this book, I decided I just didn't want to do uh, just an academic book and be smart. I really wanted to have long interviews with the subject. And so it's from those interviews that I created this film. Um, and so uh, I was fortunate, you know, in documentary to know your subject well. I had watched every one of his films, read everything I could about him um, before going into uh, production. 
and that helps so much. Um, and um, yeah, that's the journey how I got there. Yeah, and uh, this is your uh, first feature documentary? It's my first uh, feature documentary, yes. Okay, before that, uh, theoretically, uh, yeah, you know a lot of things, but uh, did you make uh, films, more films before, I mean, short films? Yes, I had made uh, a short film at uh, UCLA in uh, U University of California, Los Angeles. I had produced over 10 films here uh, in, in the Arab film studio. I was working as a producer and those film, short films went to, to festivals uh, all over the world. But uh, yeah, I, I had curated many film festivals, but I hadn't made a feature film, so. Yeah, I saw that uh, you are experienced also in uh, film festivals. Uh, in which countries uh, you were involved in um, film festival organizing? Yes, I mean, really, it's uh, I did many film festivals in uh, the UAE, but you can say that I organized uh, many film and cultural events in Los Angeles and New York before that. Um, uh, the Abu Dhabi Film Festival, Dubai Film Festival. I, I was, a, you know, a part of those festivals always. Um, and also, uh, I, you know, I had the opportunity to be artistic director of uh, uh, a festival, Anasi. And most recently, I had, I'm artistic director of an environmental film festival. Yes, climate change is uh, a serious uh... Yes. Uh, issue. Of, especially, uh, our yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Especially here, um, since, uh, one of the biggest carbon footprints is in uh, the Arab Gulf. And so, uh, yeah, it's important. Yeah. Um, okay. So I understand why you wrote uh, these emails to us recently, <laughs> because you understand that uh, how strange and uh, different is to have a festival. Uh, this period during the pandemic and uh, to insist to to go the festival to try to make the festival to go on um what uh, yeah th and thank you very much for your concern and uh, your good words uh, you. what about uh, the dubai film festival what happened this year you're still connected to, to them? No, no. The, uh, in the last couple of years, there are no more festivals uh, or big festivals or international festivals in Dubai or Abu Dhabi um, that one can speak of. Uh, perhaps they will come back in the future. Um, there is still some festivals in, um, in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, there was one big festival. I had my world premiere at you know, the Cairo International Film Festival. Um, and that's still going strong in Egypt. Um, and so, uh, you know, but the film festivals, even before COVID and the pandemic, I think uh, it, it, there was less and less festivals and the money for festivals started not, not uh, being as much. And so it's, it's sad because the film festivals are not only great things for the filmmakers, but also there is such a hunger for independent films, for unique stories, things that are just outside of what we're given. And I think it's the same thing all over the world. Um, people don't only want Netflix or what they have in their uh, cinemas. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested in the, your thoughts. Um, yes, and... Uh, in, in my opinion, um, according to my opinion, um, I, I care a lot about uh, independent filmmakers because I work, I work. I would do the festivals with them for the, for the last uh, 15 years. And I'm a filmmaker too. I became a filmmaker five years ago. I studied and uh, I, I did my first documentary last uh, year as my thesis film. And um, 
so and I'm I'm looking for for a position <laughs> in the in the big in the big festivals or uh, in distribution. So I found this very difficult. Right. Uh, very very difficult so during the pandemic uh, i had uh, the, the thoughts and the concerns about uh, these festivals in uh, cyprus bridges this uh, what we have right now and last month in uh, in cyprus uh, we ran the, the cyprus Film festival for 15 years and we started with dubai <laughs> the same year with dubai Film festival uh, and we met uh, at Cannes that uh, 15 years ago, 2006, uh, Dubai Film Festival had a lot of money and uh, had big parties <laughs> at Cannes. Yeah, that's true. But we did also, we had parties at the beach uh, uh, with uh, New York Film and Video Dance, uh, Film and Video Festival. Uh, in any case, so I was thinking about that and uh, we, uh, we thought and we designed and we built this platform inspiretv.com that launched uh, last month and uh, this is also a distribution platform for independent films but mm -hmm. of certain genre uh, the issues uh, as uh, climate change humanitarian issues uh, um, women empowerment, uh, right. uh, minority groups uh, empowerment to give a voice uh, to all these uh, people. And uh, the independent filmmakers, uh, they can submit for free in this platform. And uh, if to consider their film, and uh, they can be video on demand and uh, they get 8% of the net proceeds from the first view. Uh, and so, yeah, we, so we thought about that. And as a festival, independent film festival, we still exist, 15 mm. years in Cyprus and Great. 11 yeah. years now, now, and we collaborate with this platform. All films that are selected in the festivals in British International Film Festival and Cyprus International Film Festival are eligible. So they, if the director want, they they can be uh, they can uh, be included directly to the distribution platform. Oh, and wow. we think, yeah. Also, we establish a Inspire Art Fund uh, to sponsor a new work of an independent artist. He can be a filmmaker or a musician or a theatrical play. We, we will see. We, we don't have uh, limitations. And today I had a, a discussion with the Paris Film Festival. And we exchanged some ideas like with you now. And uh, they liked the idea. I say maybe some festivals join or organizations join our powers and make this uh, inspired art fund uh, bigger Why yeah. Do have... yeah i mean I, I think it's really important to have more funds more opportunities uh this fun uh, this film that i made was made with a very small fund and uh the rest was just uh i have a, a great cinematographer who's my friend who graduated from uch film school Jan Severin, I had a great uh, editor, but they all did this work out of passion and not uh, out of uh, funding and stuff like that. So it's my hope the next film project that I work on, yes, there's more funds out there to, to, to receive. And, you know, it takes a lot, but not taking so long because I have a lot of friends who have done well in, in the film festival circuit, but it sometimes takes over five to six years going from fund to fund to fund to fund. And I think um, it's it's just not easy um, uh, how, how this works. Um, and, yes. you know, you, you said it yourself, distribution is, the, is, is one of the trickiest things um, for independent filmmakers, because there are some companies that are easily willing to distribute your work but uh, distributors have to be working always on new films and this and that. They don't see, especially with documentary, you need 
distributors that really care about your issues also, um, because that'll help where to show the film. And um, I worked on one film on autism, for example, and it's, it's six years later and it's still showing all over the world in different groups, not, uh, not festivals. So I think distribution also for it, especially for documentary and uh, needs to look beyond the film festival circuit too, um, because uh, you know, there is many, many other places that are always wanting to screen films also. Um, exactly, exactly. And your film, I think uh, it will have a great future because yes, you make, uh, you create awareness about this uh, great artist. And uh, yes, I agree with you, the cinematography is uh, very nice and the editing. And I thank, think uh, you have you. something in common with other film, uh, My Wild Heart. They have also great uh, cinematography. But yeah, I, I, don't I know noticed that looks like a great film. Yeah, yeah. Yes, bo both of you. Um, all right, great. And uh, about the Cairo, you mentioned Cairo. I, I, I am a co-producer in the film, Tenderness, that is screened tomorrow. And we have a chat with the director tomorrow at six o'clock, Panagiotis Karamitsos. And the film was selected at Cairo Film Festival. And- uh, Ah, nice. Eight, eight or nine. Yeah, it was, it is wonderful. But it is sponsored from the Ministry of Tourism. Mm. And uh, it's all about hospitality, the best hospitality, the best uh, theaters to screen your films. And yeah, it is a very nice festival. We enjoyed it a lot. And I'm, I'm glad that they, they still, uh, yeah, it is mat the matter of the, of the government that they concern about the tourism. They have also studios. Right. So they want to, to promote the studios. Also Dubai, Dubai uh, had some studios. I've never been there. I don't know how big or... Um, D Dubai and Abu Dhabi have uh, many, many studios and they're producing many of the Syrian, uh, the series are being produced in Abu Dhabi. Um, also, I mean, you have three different Emirates that are funding films. Um, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Sharjah are producing films, and many film companies are starting to come here from Bollywood and the US, like Mission Impossible and other films, stuff like this. Um, it would be nice if there was, you know, I mean, I think there's a strategy on the film commissions to, you know, uh, create um, a good economy for, for film companies to film here. Um, and you do have different types of, uh, you know, there, there's many uh, different, there's some good locations uh, in, in the UAE um, to film. But um, yeah, it's, it's, there, there's actually been more interest in both Dubai and Abu Dhabi before the pandemic um, to support uh, big film crews coming here. Even during the pandemic, there was a film uh, a, a war film shot, a well-known French director, I forget who, um, did a film here in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so there, there is, there is, uh, there is some filmmaking uh, even in the pandemic, yeah. And, uh, what about the studios in uh, Dubai and the, uh, uh, in the way they 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 build um, neighborhoods and uh, uh, mi Middle East uh, <laughs> areas, uh, or it is uh, only for post production and uh, shooting interior. No, no, no. They they built they built some neighborhoods. They built the but it was but I think it's more. Um, focused on uh, series, um, uh, the series that, you know, that can show on, uh, well, right now on Netflix, but before um, in the Middle East, the big thing is the Ramadan series. This is the, the, one of the holy months. Um, people watch these uh, 30 episode series usually. And so they, they, they do have certain um, created locations 
um, to film these. Now, they could be converted more for cinema. There are certain islands that uh, look like, you know, historic places 200 years ago. Um, there are <clears throat> uh, even, <clears throat> you know, different terrains in the UAE. There's Everybody thinks it's a desert, but there's also Ras al Khaima that has mountains and lots of donkeys, no camels. And so th there is, you know, there should be some more opportunities in the future to do filming here. Um, and it's, you know, it's very safe. And I, I think Abu Dhabi tried to do something where every film company got 35% off and they got, they got their taxes back. So there is a big effort to support um, film crews and co-production. Um, yeah. It's still, I, I, yeah, it's still beginning. It's not something as, you know, uh, it's not something, for instance, Morocco is, is still more, ex has more experience in this and, and, and bigger crews. So Morocco is, is quite well known for many Hollywood films. For example, many, many films have been shot in Morocco. Um, Nezar, have you been involved also in uh, theater, in theatrical yes. performances? Yes. Oh. Can you tell us some things about that? Well, um, I started something, I, I've done uh, a couple of uh, plays here, not too many, but uh, the last play that I did was something called uh, documentary theater, or sometimes in the UK, they call it uh, verbatim theater, which is you, you use documentary ethics and style to interview people. And then you recreate, based on the interviews, you recreate uh, these interviews on stage, either with actors or what I did, I actually had um, five women interview their mothers um, and these women recreated their mother's memory on stage. So it was called Memories of Childhood. And I, had, I worked with two professional actors, one from Lebanon, one from Italy, and three um, uh, uh, actors from here who were from the region. And so uh, it was a great experience. And the crowds were, were really excited about um, this, this sort of unique feel that it was sort of a documentary on stage. And, uh, you know, I, I would love to do more of these projects, but uh, the, the, the I was scheduled to do one this year, but um, it, it, it didn't happen because, uh, I mean, theater projects were, were, were basically canceled. Yeah documentary on stage. <laughs> yes. It sounds yeah. very interesting. What about the memories of childhood? Yes, it was, a, it was, a, this project was, was so exciting to work with because I worked with basically five talented um, women from all ages who conducted like hours and hours of interviews with their mother. And we then connected those interviews into a script. Um, I did not do it verbatim because it, I, it's, it was too difficult, but I had each interviewer and actor um, create a staging and a presentation of their mother's memory. And so the memories were, were one was from Lebanon during the war, Another one was a young woman who had to walk for three days in the desert because she was escaping being killed by another tribe. And it was, it was how this family arrived in the United Arab Emirates. Um, another one was about her, her mother's first, um, uh, first experience with cinema, watching a Bollywood film from India. And so it was interacting with a screen, a Bollywood, a famous Bollywood film. And so he, we, we, you know, another actor was from Sudan and it was memories of her mother of being a child in Sudan. And so, and each, each character created a very unique staging. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a very inspiring project and I hope to do more of them, but uh, 
you know, only time we, you can't do every project uh, all the time, so. Yeah, and what are the, the what are you, what do you do now? Do you have uh, courses? Uh, yes, well, I mean, like I, I teach courses on cinema. I'm still producing films. So I'm producing six short documentaries um, from the UAE that are finishing now. We, we were lucky that we did most of the production in, in January and February, but because of many things, we're only finishing the, the production now. <clears throat> on many subjects, the, these films were. And uh, I, I have another feature film project that I'm working on. It's called The Guilt Project. And uh, it's a hybrid documentary on, on guilt. And it's based on a script that I wrote. And then it's not docudrama, but I will be using um, uh, amateur actors or the actors that are part of my film will be people I've interviewed as a documentary. Um, and so, but this project, obviously it's slowed down. I've received one grant. I, uh, I'm trying to right now write the, the script and uh, hopefully finish it uh, and like make it more polished uh, for 2021. Okay. We wish you good luck. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, Nizar. Um, thank you very much uh, being here no, with no, us. I mean, thank you so much. I mean, I did the, the you know, I have been, uh, you know, I'm really honored to be part of your festival. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I looked at it. You have a lot of passion for cinema. Um, it's, it's not easy the layout of online festivals. I, I think you guys did a great job so that it's easy to see the films and make choices. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful. It's been very difficult, like you said, the film, doing film festivals. And I think, I mean, you doing these films online, whether it's the one in Cyprus or here shows, I mean, is, is, is like a good role model for me because I actually thought of postponing um, my, my film festival, but I think it can be done, um, even if it's yes. not. Yeah. Yes, it can be done, but the filmmakers, the participants, must have passion too. Not only the. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I was. Right. I, you, you know, Saftik, I was um, as a filmmaker. I was disappointed the last months that the festivals that my film were uh, uh, selected were cancelled, or they say. They did. They didn't do not anything not to, to yeah. gather the uh, the directors or to do a, a bit of networking. So I think yeah. yes, but and and the festivals. I know what uh, the film. Many times filmmakers come to see only their own film. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It is disappointing <laughs> too <It's laughs> because not... they want. All the rest of the filmmakers to be there to watch their film, but they have yes, to be. Because just they talking to, to you, I mean, Petra is, I mean, this, I mean, yes, I've been in many festivals. There's no talking, there's no camaraderie, there's no under, there's no, um, you just, the film is there and you don't know what happens. But at least, I mean, you, this reaching out, this discussion um, makes you feel uh, festive like a festival at least. And uh, I, I mean, um, you, you know, that's, that's half the battle. Um, uh, and yeah, how to watch each other's films. I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's really not easy yeah. to watch all the films. So. Yeah. And uh, this is discussion is not only between us. It is yeah. live on Zoom. Uh, okay. On Facebook in uh, two pages, I think. And in a while it will be in more. And it, will, it is recorded, so it will be also on YouTube. <laughs> oh, great. And, uh, and yeah, so many people will know about uh, you and your film. And you, you, can, you can be there uh, here um, at 8 o'clock around. We will have every, every night, we will have discussions with the filmmakers. And uh, the other participants can participate. They can. Uh, enter the Zoom because everybody has the link uh, from you. So 
Ah, I, okay. I so hope it's, yeah. it's, it's not only today. <laughs> you, you, you are permitted, you are allowed to, to be every night here. Okay, I will come back. Yes. Will come back. Yes. Sure. <laughs> or you can check uh, the video recordings also, if you ah, miss very good. something very good. like. Cool. So, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I'm sure that we'll meet in the future, next year, yeah. somewhere, yeah. in the festival uh, online or live. <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope. Yeah, and uh, thank you so much for the Greek premiere. Thank you so much. Afharisto, uh, as they say, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Stay safe, healthy, mm -hmm. and be inspired. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you.